Hello, my name is Lucas Mazur. I am a professor of social psychology at the Jagiellonian University in Krakow, Poland. I also have the privilege of teaching at the Sigmund Freud University in Berlin, Germany. And I'm coming to you today from the other side of the Atlantic Ocean in Buffalo, New York. I was excited to hear about the summer festival at the Flughafen Tempelhof, and I was sorry to learn that it would be taking place while I was back here in the United States. After speaking with colleagues at the SFU in Berlin, we thought that I might be able to symbolically join you electronically, hence I am sending you this brief video. Connecting with you in this way from across the Atlantic also seems particularly appropriate given that we are now celebrating the 70th anniversary of the Berlin Airlift, whereby the Allies stood by their then new partners in what became known as West Berlin. Currently, I am not far from the Niagara Falls Air Force Base, which provided support to that undertaking 70 years ago. 70 years later today, this message is being sent along the same path, albeit by different means, from the US to Germany, from Buffalo to Berlin. As an American who lives and works in Europe, not only have I been personally fascinated by the different languages, cultures, and peoples on these two continents, this is in large part what drew me to Europe in the first place, but I have benefited in countless ways from the bridges we have built over the past half century between us. This is a theme that I would like to briefly talk with you about today, borders and bridges. This theme lies at the heart of the Berlin Airlift, and this is what we are celebrating today. We are celebrating a particular historical event, but also a perennial part of human life. In that sense, the celebration today is not only a celebration of a historical hurdle overcome, but also of the human capacity to overcome the challenges of human difference that will always be found on our path. That is, provided we have the fortitude, wisdom, patience, and commitment to do so. As you all know, the Berlin Airlift in German is known as the Berlin Air Bridge. The monument that stands in front of the Tempelhof Airport, the site of the Berlin Airlift, reflects this linguistic difference as it resembles a bridge stretching across the skies. While one side of the bridge is firmly grounded, the other end of the bridge stretches into the sky, reaching, as it were, for the other side. This is what makes this monument so beautiful. It captures the experience of division, but also the desire to reach across that divide. This is a fundamentally important message. Bridges do not remove divisions. They do not break down borders. Perhaps ironically, they are actually grounded in such opposites on opposite sides, and their very stability, let alone their purpose, is founded on that divide. Bridges connect us, not by filling in the gaps that separate us, but by respecting that space while simultaneously allowing us to traverse the divide, each to the other. As a social psychologist, I've been studying how we come to understand collective experiences, particularly experiences of large-scale violence. A considerable body of psychological research has suggested that the formation of meaningful narratives around such traumatic experiences can help people to constructively work through the challenges such experiences can create. This appears to be true for both individuals and collectives. It also appears to be true for people experiencing various degrees of psychological distress, from extreme trauma, such as that related to PTSD, to more common experiences of depression. How does this work? How can something as simple as a meaningful narrative help relieve such serious challenges? Acknowledging the more complex social psychological processes involved, we can say that part of what allows this to work is that narratives help to provide structure to that which would otherwise remain formless, often chaotic, and for many overwhelming. A narrative is often a centrally important part of the process by which we can make even the most overwhelming experiences manageable. What is interesting to note is that narratives are always necessarily more simplistic than the wider real reality of the lived experience. Narratives are impoverishment of the data, if you will, but therein lies their magic. Similarly, over the last several decades, psychological research has increasingly showed that remembering and forgetting are in many ways two sides of the same coin, and that both are an important part of healthy psychological and interpersonal functioning. A healthy memory is not a memory which never fails, 
with all facts preserved as if in a photograph. Rather, a healthy memory is considerably plastic, malleable, meaning that it is just rigid enough to serve as a useful tool, but that it is not overly rigid so, that, so as to render it inflexible in the face of changing demands placed upon it, both from ourselves and from the outside world. Importantly, memory is a process, often a social process. In other words, memory is not a thing that is, it is a process that is done, and the doing of memory always takes place within a particular context. So why is this important for us today? The borders that we impose on a vastly more complex reality can be tremendously valuable. The diversity of identities, ideas, visions, and understandings are a source of power. They help us make sense of an overwhelming world, and they allow us to find meaning in our lives. Problems for psychological and social functioning can arise when we are unable to impose borders, but they can also arise when those borders become too rigid and impermeable. As far as we value psychological health and harmonious interpersonal and intergroup relations, we are thus forced to find the balance between rigidity and malleability. Borders can close down dialogue and keep us apart, but they also allow for the very notion of dialogue and cooperation, and even unification. Tolerance, friendship, compassion, and cooperation are possible precisely because of the differences between us precisely because they afford us the opportunity to stretch our hand across the divide, just as we see in the monument to the Berlin Air Bridge in front of Tempelhof Airport. This is not an easy task, but it is an important one. What is more, because these divisions appear to be part of human psychological functioning, healthy psychological functioning, we can expect the challenge of diversity and divisions to be with us for as long as we are around. We need not protect ourselves with walls, nor need we presume some fanciful homogeneity of humanity. Rather than merely respecting the differences between us, we should be thankful for them, for they afford us the opportunity to build bridges. The challenge of, the challenge of borders and bridges is not only applicable to international relations or psychological health, but to a wide range of phenomena. For example, roughly 100 years ago, adolescence was a new concept a concept that arose from our renegotiation of childhood, which itself was a new concept before it. As we look out at the social world today, we are starting to draw new borders around a new group, a new age group, namely emerging adulthood, giving it new meanings, new ways of seeing and being in the world. Similarly, regardless of whether psychologists break up the world with qualitative or quantitative methods, we are forced to acknowledge the limitation of our methodological tools, however, while also capitalizing on their strengths. As new categories are constructed, new bridges need be built. This is not to say that the contours of these outlines are hard and fast, far from it. Rather, this illustrates how such borders are fluid, while at the same time gaining their power from the clarity they provide. The Berlin Airlift, the Berlin Air Bridge, and the Tempelhof Airport more broadly speak to the power in bridging divisions. Divisions and differences will always be part of human life. It is up to us to rise to the challenge of reaching across the divide. It is no wonder that the Sigmund Freud University in Berlin has taken the Berlin Air Bridge Monument as its unofficial symbol. An Austrian university operating in six different European nations, the SFU values and capitalizes on diversity, diversity of all kinds, theoretical, methodological, political, ethnic, national, and so on. The SFU sees strength in diversity, strength in extending a hand and an invitation. Ich bin sehr stolz darauf, einer Institution wie der SFU anzugehören und fühle mich geehrt, an einem so historisch wichtigen Ort wie dem Flughafen Tempelhof zu arbeiten. Ich freue mich heute von der anderen Seite des Atlantiks und zwar aus dem Bundesstaat New York, mit Ihnen zu sprechen. Vielen Dank für diese Gelegenheit.